What's up, everybody? That's right, it's me, Coach Mills in the flesh. And, you know, besides getting that Game Leap Premium sub, I've always said that getting a personalized VOD review is one of the best ways to figure out your weaknesses and improve as a player. And I thought it would be best that I start doing VOD reviews on this channel of Game Leap subscriber submissions. So, that's what I'm going to be doing, kicking it off with a bronze Genji main. And let's read exactly what he sent me on Discord, and then we're going to break that down, and then we're going to go into his VODs and break down his mistakes and see if some of the things he says in this message is true. So he messaged me this. He said, hello, I've been stuck in bronze for about three years now, but I know I don't belong in there. I consistently beat plats, diamonds, and even masters. It may sound like I'm just another player who thinks that they're supposed to be in a higher rank, but I promise you that in anything other than roll queue, I would have made it to plat and higher. Now, this is some bold claims, and I responded to this in a lot of different ways, but I'm not going to get into that yet. Let's jump into his footage first, and then I'm going to tell y'all some takeaways that I'm going to get from this entire thing. So I'm going to jump right into this Genji gameplay, and we're going to start pointing out mistakes and things that we see from a Genji who claims to be multiple ranks higher than the rank he's currently in or has been stuck in. So, okay, okay. So already we see a really vital mistake, and this is something that you see all the time there's a big problem that I see a lot with low, low SR players. And I'm talking about very, very low SR players. So there's a thing that often happens and it's called object permanence. And it's something that a lot of low players don't have. And what I mean by that is you're putting yourself into the shoes of enemies and you're imagining where they would be based on the prior information that you gathered. So when you see this McCree and you poke him and you see him veering off to the right at that last second, you could assume and even if you didn't see him, you could hypothetically assume that a Genji could veer off and be here. Now, if you get hit with a flashbang, you should die. Now, this enemy McCree is not going to punish. And this is something else that's really, really important. And this is why it's important to try to teach in a way that is not too brutal. Because you learn in Overwatch based on getting punished, right? If you consistently make a mistake and you're consistently punished for that mistake, eventually you'll stop making it, right? That's just true with pretty much everything in life. But because the McCree, and I'm sure other McCrees are the same way, didn't capitalize on the fact that he got stunned, he's not going to learn. And that's why it's really important to point this out. But he basically peeks this McCree, should have dies, doesn't die, okay? So... That's one mistake right off the bat. He should have been dead. Against a better McCree, you would be dead. Okay, so he grabs the Mega and... Okay, uh, okay, okay, wait, wait. Let, 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 let's back this up two seconds. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to that point because it's extremely important. Okay, so he goes here. He gets flashed. Then he uses his Reflect to get out. Goes back to cover. Repeaks. So the Zen is still here. Weak. His team... His Zara is getting the Zen weak. But... He has no reflect on cooldown, okay? That is his number one ability to stop, especially hit, scan, fire, but most projectiles as well. And there's a McCree, and there's a Widow looking right at him. He's re-peaking this angle without his abilities that will protect him from this scenario. Now, one thing that you should always be doing on Genji is engaging based on your cooldowns. You can just wait the seven seconds before you go in because you are not forced to engage right now. And it's extremely important that you time your engages with your cooldowns. I've teached this a lot on this channel. And peaking characters like this, like I said, better McCree, better Widow, you would die here. Now, you're not going to die, but I have to point out these mistakes because up against better, better players, you say you consistently beat Plats, Diamonds, and even Masters. A plat, a diamond, a masters, even a gold player would punish you in mo all these scenarios. Okay, so you're going to dash the Zen. That's good. But right here, this is where time to kill becomes a really big issue. You really, really tunnel vision on this Widowmaker. Like, really tunnel vision on this Widowmaker. And you, 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 you try to fight this Widow so long that the enemy Zen literally comes back from spawn. Now, I talked, I talked with Lord Rado a little bit about this. So, he doesn't have his aim assist turned up that high. And I know notoriously, especially high-ranking Genji players on console, they have their aim assist turned up pretty high, even to max sometimes. And he only has his at about 45. Now, for the majority of people, even on con console or even if you're on PC, having, you know, a certain time to kill is fine. But that's not really what got him killed. Sure, if he would have killed the Widowmaker, he would have got out. But... He also could have backed out many times. There was many moments where he didn't have to tunnel vision this Widow, but 
He was so dead set on killing her, even after the Widow got that Mega, the Mega right here. Even after it was obvious that he wasn't going to burst down this Widow, he just still went after her. And you're going to see it in the next fight as well. He's going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to go into this fight. Okay. So for reference, there's a Hog, there's a Widow, there's a Zen. He just saw the Rhine, okay? Okay. So, he just completely hard tunnel visioned. And I mean, absolutely. And this is something that I, you know, with the object permanence thing I talked about and the tunnel visioning, you really need to be thinking about your enemies as well. Like, you're not really thinking about where your teammates are. You're not really thinking about what your enemies are doing. You see a target and you get really zoned in. And I know why you think that. You, you see the Widow and you say, I'm a Genji, it's my job to counter Widow. Well, yes, but there's an opportunity. There's moments that can present itself, and it's definitely not when the enemy team's regrouping, and it's definitely not when two tanks and a healer are on top of her. Because because look right here. So you see the Zen, you see the Rhine. Maybe you missed the Hog, but you really should see him. This Widow has a pocket. So I think you're overestimating your time to kill, because we just saw you try to duel Widow for a while, and you couldn't kill her. And I'm not saying that you need to have amazing mechanical skill to play Genji. I think that you could be a terrible mechanically skilled Genji and get to plat. Because you just need to time your engages at the appropriate moments. But you're going way too aggressive here. Maybe if you like triple dink her in the head and dash her, you could get away with something like this. But even then, incredibly risky. I mean, the margin for error is huge. There's so many enemies right here. I think you get the picture here. And I mean, yeah, you just see the entire team here. Yeah, you just completely tunnel vision, and yeah. So now we're going to move on to the next fight. Widow as well. This one's actually good. You kill this Widow. That's good. Good. A little bit of a missed dash there. Not the biggest deal. You end up getting the kill anyways, but... Now, for those of you who don't know, while we're waiting, I actually got my star on console. I was hard stuck gold on Xbox for like a year before I moved to PC. Okay, so I'm interested in how you're going to use this blade here. So... So right here, this is what I'm thinking, okay? You know the Zen probably has trance. At least that's what you should be thinking about. Every single time you're playing Genji, you need to be thinking about the things that are going to directly shut down your blade because that's where you get a lot of your value, and that's going to be the Zen. Now, we know, because we're omniscient, I'm God. No, I'm just kidding. But we know that Zen is at 86%. Uh, so he doesn't quite have it yet. But in your mind, you wouldn't know that for sure. That's too close or too small of a margin for you to actually know. So what you should be trying to do in this fight is trying to either kill the Zen or bait out his trance and then you can blade. Because if you win this fight, it's last fight. So keeping that in mind, I want you to see what happens next right here. So I see you look up, you're looking for an opportunity, you thought about it, you changed your mind, probably a good choice, but look at right here. This Zen is extremely killable. You could walk up and try to dash him, try to kill him. You could even get closer, just throw some shurikens at him. It would be very easy to bait out Trance here. He actually gets Trance here. So you could either kill him because he doesn't Trance in time because you kill him out of nowhere, or you bait out his Trance and then you can Blade afterwards. These are things that you should actively be looking for on Genji. Pretty much no matter what rank you are, this is pretty basic on Genji. Your counters are the things that are going to directly stop you, and specifically defensive ults like Beat and Transcendence are the big ones that if you can bait out prematurely, you're more likely to get some value out of your blade. Now that being said, um, the Bronze Zen is going to do what Bronze Zens do, I guess, and walk into the enemy team and die in the last fight with his trance. So, probably don't do that, but this is not a Zen VOD. But... Now, your team's going to grab, you're going to dash up, you're going to blade. That's fine. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's the last fight. Um, that McCree fired a little early. Now, a better McCree probably would have waited to fire until your reflect was over. Or they would have canceled, you know, their high noon and then just tried to flash you, flash the ground and kill you. And then also, if you would have tracked him a little bit better. So, if we play that back. If you would have tracked him a little bit better here. When he actually shot you, you would have killed him. Yeah, just a little, just a little, and I know, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be too brutal on your mechanics, because I do think that they're going to improve when you improve your settings. Speaking of console, this is specifically for console Genji players. 
high sensitivity is typically best once you get used to it. High aim assist, because when you're close to targets, having good aim assist is pretty good. And then also, bind your jump to something that is not the primary or the default jump button for your controller. Because you need to be able to jump and aim at the same time. You do not want to have to take your thumb off the joystick to jump. Important things, just some stuff. I did some research on that, and I remember back in the old days that that is pretty much what you want to do. So, Okay, now I'm going to blitz through the second part, and then I'm going to give him some takeaways. And then I'm going to talk about what I messaged him and talk about what he said at the beginning of the video. So, so he's going to hop this fence. This is a pretty typical thing that you could do on Genji where you just hop a fence, you fish for damage. If you get enough damage, you can go in for a dash and then get that reset. If you don't, you can always just dash away. Now he's going to extend here a little bit too long. He doesn't get punished for it, but it was really close. Just he did he did get away, so it's not too big of a deal, but Now Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, let's let's back this up. And let's talk about this moment because I always teach that you should be dashing with intent, right? You don't have to always dash to get a kill, but you need to have a game plan for afterwards. Like it's okay to dash through the enemy team to get damage in, but you need to think about where you're going to end up. And is that place safe where you're going to end up? Now, there was no, no reason for you to dash here. I mean, if you look at the, the health totals of everyone on the enemy team, maybe you're trying to go in with a Reaper, generate pressure, but... All three of these people are full health, and you're just dashing into them. So, big takeaway. I think you're maybe getting a little too tunnel visioned again. And, yeah, you need to be using these abilities with intent. Play off your cooldowns. Don't go in until you have your cooldowns. And use your cooldowns with intent. Pretty important. Now, of course, even if you dash someone low, you probably would have got trapped here. I didn't even see the trap. But, you probably would have gotten a kill instead of dying. So... Now, what I believe, if I remember correctly, you you almost win this fight because your Reaper gets like four kills because he's a he's a god. This is this is a moment that I wanted to talk about, um, specifically. So right here, you, you see the far. You kind of don't even want to fight the far. That's fine. So you see this junk rat, and I don't blame you for not wanting to challenge the junk rat. I don't even like challenging junk rats. Junk rats have this weird thing where they can just throw their mines and still do damage to you even when you're reflecting because they just get right around your hitbox. So the best way to deal with a junk rat is to poke him from afar and then only dash him and commit to him when you are 100% going to kill him and make sure you dash a little bit off that ground so you don't accidentally dash into a trap. But yeah, I, I just I just thought I would just mention this because I actually hate fighting junk rats as Genji. So you're going to kind of avoid him as well. A little bit of a failed wall run. We've all been there. Now, you know, as a random tangent, isn't it the worst thing in the world when you're playing Hanzo or Genji and you try to wall run on, uh, like, Volskaya and you hit, like, the conveyor belt and then you fall down and die because of RNG? Anyways, sorry. Random tangent. <laughs> and then, oh. Uh, okay, so y'all bait out in more, which is good. You're going to fight this Baptiste. You have all your cooldowns, so you can still be here. You dash through. You go back and turn on him with Reflect. So... Yeah, that, most of the time that's not going to work because you're kind of going too fast for the enemy to fire at you. And a lot of times with Reflect, you want to bait enemies, make yourself an easy target, and bait them into shooting themselves with the Reflect. Or just use it to get out. Not really using it to run at an enemy. It's it's probably not going to work, especially the, how fast you did it. Now, you're going to disengage. That's fine. You're going to get your, your dash back. You're going to dash again through the enemy team. This one's okay because you ended up somewhere safe. But then you instantly left the safety of the little circle and recommitted without your abilities. Yeah, most likely going to die. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this, but I'm going to break down a couple more plays. And then we're going to call it because it's a pretty long VOD. And I know I've been talking for a while. And yeah. Okay, see, like that's a good use of a dash. Like... That is an actual solid dash, even though you didn't get a kill. And this is what I'm talking about. You dash through, you got damage, but you can wall run and, or wall climb, and they can't chase you. Now you're hopping back in, you're fine, you almost got your dash again. You can dash a second time. Like, this is good. Good use of your terrain. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. This should be what you're consistently doing. This is a much, much better than what I saw at the beginning. And you're probably going to kill the Zari here. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. 
Now, I do see that you like to try to dash this Farah. Maybe it's because you see a lot of high-level Genjis do it. It's a pretty difficult to execute play to kill a Farah mid-air. Most of the time, it's not worth it unless a Farah is weak or she droops too low. You can go for it if you're confident in your mechanical skill behind it, but most of the time, it's going to be very, very difficult, especially if the Farah is aware that that's something that you're going to try to do. So you Blade here, not really dedicated targets. In fact, no targets. Yeah, and then you died with a tire. Y'all lose this team fight. You're going to lose this round. So I'm not going to go over any more, but I think I have a lot of takeaways for you. And I think that you already know ultimately what our verdict is on whether or not we think that you're going to be someone that deserves that plat rank or even the diamond rank that you're talking about. So this is something that I talked about in our Discord messages, but I want everyone else to hear it. If you are someone who actually belongs in a higher rank, like you legitimately be belong and like multiple ranks above your rank, every single game that you're going to be in, it's going to be fundamentally unfair, right? If you are a plat player, like you actually deserve to be plat and you're playing in bronze, you're basically like a super smurf. That's like a super smurf. Every single game that you're put in is going to be unfair in your favor. And he talks about levers, right? And you also got to understand that statistically percentage wise you are statistically just as likely to get throw you're statistically less likely to get throwers than your enemy because you are never going to throw or leave right so the enemy team is actually more likely to get throwers and leavers and sure they're more likely to get smurfs but if you are also like i said a player that is many ranks above their rank you are technically a smurf yourself that is really what it should be and the games are going to be unfair and you're going to climb but i want to know your opinion in the comments down below ultimately do you think this guy deserves a rank up do you think that he actually deserves his bronze rank now that being said as the big takeaway for you the genji person that i'm talking to the genji person that i'm doing the vod review on you really really need to not tunnel vision you're tunnel visioning way way too hard on one thing and on top of that the object permanence aspect is very important you need to be thinking about what your enemies are doing you need to be thinking about when you're pushing in are they going to be looking at you are they just going to let you kill their widow right in front of them no most likely not and then also don't over evaluate your abilities that's a big thing you don't have to have amazing mechanical skill to climb but you cannot ant into the enemy team trying to get a kill that you just are not capable of getting now i know your dps and you know your overall output is going to increase when you inc fix your settings increase that you know um the aim sensitivity the aim lock sensitivity but i hope that this has been helpful for you and i hope that this has been a sort of reality check because i say this a lot when you're in the lower ranks improving is easy and what i mean by that is the mistakes that you're making are huge they're huge mistakes and they're easy to iron out as you start to climb you get to that masters that grandmaster the mistakes you're making are a lot smaller and as such they require much more fine tuning and it's not huge mistakes, right? And the huge mistakes are the easiest to deal with, honestly, it, you know? And on top of that, if you wanna be featured in one of these videos, here's what you gotta do. In the comments down below, I want you to put your main, the character you played, a replay code in the comments down below and any notes that you have from me, or, of course, you could send a link to me personally with a YouTube link of 1080p, 60 FPS. That is the minimum I will accept. But you have a chance to be featured. And, yeah, I want to start doing this a lot more. Tell me what you think about seeing my ugly mug. Tell me what you think about me directly talking to the camera. This is the first time I've done this. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more in-depth VOD reviews, do yourself a favor. Go check out GameLeap.com right now for in-depth events, VOD reviews, tips and tricks, and much, much more. Anyways, thank you so much for coming by. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and of course, until next time.